Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with the series on JavaScript. Now in this video, let's try to find which is the best loop. Now first of all, there's no best loop, okay? A lot of content online by saying for loop is the best loop. That's not the case. Every loop has its own advantage and a drawback, okay? And they can be used in special cases. Example, let's say, see when you know the starting point and ending point, we will always go for for loop. It always works perfectly. So if you know the starting value, you know the ending value, you know the iterations, for loop is the best. Example, if you want to print something from 1 to 100, for loop is the best, right? Even if you want to print all the numbers between 1 to 100, which is divisible by 3, you can use a for loop. Let's do an example here. So we'll use a for loop and we'll start with let i equal to 1, i less than equal to, so we have to go till 100, right? And then we'll say i plus plus. Now here, I don't want to print all the values. I just want to print those values which are divisible by three. Now, how do we do that? So what I will suggest to you is uh, pause the video, try it by yourself. That's how you learn, right? So pause this video, try the example from yourself and execute that. Tell me the output in the comment section or the code in the comment section and then continue. Okay, so I'm not sure if your code is right, which you have commented, but let's try. So what we'll do is we'll check. So every time you do the iteration, you check if the given number is divisible by three, you do that with the help of mod three. If it is divisible, in that case, you will print log and you will print the value of i. By doing this, you are just printing all the numbers which are divisible by three, okay? So you can also do it for even numbers and other stuff. Maybe you want to print all the prime numbers, you can do that. So you can see we got all the values. We got three, six, nine, 12. So this is the entire table of three uh, till 100. Okay, so when you know the starting point, ending point for loop makes sense. That's the first use case, right? So what I will do now is I will just comment this part. And let's understand where while loop is the best scenario. See, you can do the same thing on using while loop as well. But let's say I want to print all the numbers individually. Example, let's say we have a number here. And then I have a number which is one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Now this is one single number. Of course, you can change this number by any format, but let's say you have this one single number, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. And I want to print each digit individually. How do we do that? Uh, so basically, first of all, how do you break this entire thing, okay? So let's print in reverse order first. Let's print six and then five, then four, then three, then two, and one. Uh, first of all, how do you get six? And we have seen this, right? We can divide this number by 10. The remainder will be six, right? Let me just do that. So I will say log and I will print num mod 10. So when you say num mod 10, you can see we will get six, okay? That's simple. But how will you get five now? In that case, what we will do is we'll break this number and we'll remove six now. How do you remove six? It's very simple. If you say num is equal to num by 10, now what you're doing, you're dividing this number by 10, okay? In this case, the num will be one, two, three, four, five now. Example, let me print num. So I'm just printing num now. And if you see the output, you can see we got, oh, it is being the floating point. Okay, so how do you solve this problem? So basically what we are getting is a floating point, right? So there's one way uh, you can actually get the percent of it. Remember we have done that. You can convert a float into integer with the help of percent. And you can see we got one, two, three, four, five, cool. And then if we repeat these steps multiple times, so what we will do now is let's put this together and let's do this multiple times. Copy, paste, paste. So you can see I'm doing that for three times and see the output, we got six, five, four. And if we do this multiple times, you will get three, two, one also. Okay, that's cool, right? In fact, you can also change this number. There's no compulsion that you should have the same number. What if I do randomly uh, this? So if I choose this number, you can see we got two last number, then eight, then seven. And then if we do this multiple times, you will get four, six, and five. Okay, this looks cool, right? Now, what I will do is, instead of doing this multiple times, we know we should be using a loop. But the question is, which loop? Now you will say for loop, right? But then we don't know the number of digits we have in this number. Of course, you can find a length, but that's a complicated stuff. So we can simply use a while loop. And in this, what should be the condition? See, every time you divide this number, so you are reducing the number length of this thing, right? So you have to make sure you have to continue this till your value of num is greater than zero. If the value of num is going less than zero, then you have to stop. That's it, right? So we, we don't have the number of digits counting here. We're just going for a condition. In this case, while loop is the best one, right? So if you now, if you can see, we got two, eight, seven, four. In fact, I will not print this part. I just, I don't, don't want to print num, but that's where it is 
creating that issue. So if you can see, we got all the digits here. That's how we can use a while loop, right? So while loop is better when you don't know the starting point, ending point, but you know the condition, when to stop, right? So example, if I say, hey, count till 100. So you'll say one, two, three, four. But what do you say? You have to start counting from one. And then, then you will start the counting, right? One, two, three. You don't know the ending here. If I say stop, then you have to stop. So in the first scenario, when I ask you to count from one to 100, for loop. When I ask you to keep counting, while loop. Okay, and the moment I say stop, you have to stop. So instead of using while, you can also use do while. The only difference between while and do while is while will first check for the condition, then execute. Do while will first execute the block, then check for the condition. Okay, example, you want to chat with someone. So if you want to end the chat, I mean, the chat will get ended when you say stop or end the chat. While loop, right? Continuous, continuous stuff. Do while is even if the person is offline, you will send the first message and then you will get the message the person is offline. At least you have sent the first message. That is do while loop. Okay, so that's it. That's the comparison between while and do while. But let me give an assignment here. Now, since you have done this, since we have done this example, what I want you is if I give you this number, you have to print the reverse of this number. Okay, so at the end, let's say you got num2. Maybe let's do that here. Let's say num2, and the initial value of num2 is 0. At the end, when you print uh, num2, I want you to print the reverse of this number, which is 287456. Oh, sorry, 65. So that will be your assignment. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos. Bye bye.